regarding our study, obviously there's some um, popular approaches in uh, diet, like low carb, very low carb, high fat diet. And uh, from the exercise perspective, there, there's a high intensity interval training. So um, our question was, uh, which one, if we can use them in uh, overfed uh, individuals, which one is better? Or do we need both of them in one time? Uh, will be there some extra effect if we add heat to low carb diet or if we add mm. a low carb diet to, to, to heat? So that was a primary aim, which approach is uh, better exercise alone, diet alone, or both of them. Mm -hmm. So um, what were uh, some of the characteristics, Lucas, of some of those participants? Uh, yeah, the participants were uh, adults, uh, overfed adults uh, from 22 to 60 years old. Uh, they were without any medications, without any confirmed chronic diseases. So this was a high risk uh, population or high, high risk groups uh, of developing some uh, chronic diseases like uh, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure and so on and so on. So a highly risk uh, group. Um, yeah, that's just uh, basic uh, characteristics of the participants. And uh, most of all, uh, of all, they were overfed and inactive. So no regular exercise, no diet, no specific diet on. Okay, so uh, we allocated them uh, randomly to four study groups. The first group was just exercise. The second group was the just diet group, low carb, high fat diet. The third one was the combination of both. And the fourth last study group was a control. Uh, participants in the control group didn't change anything, didn't change their inactivity, didn't change their diet or whatever. And for that diet, Lucas, what, is, what was the amount in terms of carbohydrate? Is it for that 50 gram mark or what? Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the main aim for participants were to stay below 50 grams gotcha. of carbohydrates per day. And uh, they uh, should have to compensate this uh, energy restriction from the carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates uh, by increasing in the good fat intake and uh, keep the protein intake like uh, average or uh, similar like before the study. So it was actually low carb, high fat diet, not high protein. We should say it's uh, well formulated too, right? To steal like a Jeff Volek kind of kind of term there too, right? So it's yeah, they weren't just they weren't just gorging on butter, right? Like they were there was a nutritionist involved, and I think that's a really important aspect of this too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and what were some of the fats and uh, Lucas and Paul that we were directed towards to, to be able to make up that difference? Right. We advised them to, to use some natural uh, fats like butter, uh, olive oils and uh, lard and uh, this the, the stuff. So yep. we advised them to, to avoid some overconsumption of some um, other oils like uh, plant oils and they're using them for cooking and uh, and so on coconut oil as well tremendous and you know at the end of the was it eight weeks 12 weeks yeah it was a 12 weeks mm -hmm. uh, we analyze we measure them uh, every month so every four weeks after four eight and 12 weeks and uh, we did many measurements and we wanted to take a look from many perspectives. Uh, this, this paper, which is uh, already published, just focus on one part of the outcomes. It was uh, body composition and cardio uh, respiratory fitness level, but uh, we've got uh, much more data just about finishing the, the following paper. Uh, about some um, inflammation, uh, um, insulin resistance, and, and so on and so on, and and maybe what's it, what is unique, and we are just about preparing is also is we've got some uh, psychological data as well. 
So, uh, because, you know, I, I always prefer and I like this holistic uh, point of perspective, uh, not just uh, focusing on one uh, marker mm -hmm. and uh, do some uh, extra uh, conclusions, some big conclusions, but uh, I think that this holistic approach is very important because um, it is my experience uh, sometimes all the markers don't fit to each other and it's quite a difficult to conclude something easy <laughs> yeah good in this kind of complex problems it's uh yeah having a real big view that thirty thousand foot view of all these different parameters is really important and you know at, at the end of the the 12 weeks when we come to these groups you know how was that very low carb diet affecting body composition was it enhanced with the hit training was there you know can you walk us through that uh, okay, so uh, the low carb diet, either in alone or in iso isolation or in combination with uh, SSIs, uh, induce a substantial changes or decrease in uh, visceral adipose tissue because we focus not on a whole body fat, but uh, the most um, important, I guess, is uh, especially visceral adipose tissue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these uh, body mass variables decreased, uh, especially in both diet groups, and uh, no matter if there was a uh, hit or not. So, hit alone, hit alone did not cause such effects on body composition. By other ways, it, it improved exercise capacity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. And would you say that's to do with the length of the study or, or why is it that we didn't see such changes with the hit? Is it just the amount, the amount of time that they're actually exercising in a week or um, what are some potential areas there? Uh, yeah, the, the, the duration of the study, 12 weeks, it's, um, I must say, quite uh, short to conclude that this is um, uh, some uh, something that we can uh, uh, carry to some uh, long life uh, conclusions, uh, but still it show us some uh, important stuff like that uh, if we want to manage our body mass for a long time, it can't happen without diet changes. Exercise alone will probably not cause such a positive effect. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, on the flip side, like you said, when you look at both the very low carb, high fat diet and you know, whether they added the hit or not, we're achieving these significant changes. And it's interesting that this is a just an you know, just an overfat group and not even an obese group, which we'd obviously see even more pronounced effects, most likely, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and again, remember, obese is a BMI classification. Mm -hmm. So, but I know it, it obese creates a picture in our brain. So you can still be mm -hmm. overfat is is still a, an obese person in, in theory. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just commentary on the on some of the things I was hearing there. And uh, to me, I mean, I, I think 12 weeks is pretty long. Like I think like 12 weeks, that's three months. Yeah. If I'm going to the gym for three months. <laughs> I'm expecting I'm going to see some changes in my, you know, whatever my body composition in three months, if just from doing that, that workout. And we didn't see that, but we did see it in both diet groups. So something is going on there in the diet that seems to be more important than going to the gym and just doing hit. Um, and that, that, that really runs in the face of, of, you know, that those new year's resolutions that we're going to go to the gym now and we're going to do hit. And that's, you know, um, it, it says that great, we can do that for our cardiovascular fitness because those variables did go up. That was, if we were functionally better as human beings, However, if maybe more aesthetics and health are, are important, you better look at your cleaning up your diet. You know what I mean? You can't go and gouge on your Gatorade and whatnot while you're, while you're doing that hit exercise. That's just not going to help you. 